This is part two of the cat head series, needle felting short fur. So maybe you're needle felting a shorter furred breed, or in my case, I have a long furred breed with the tabby Berman, but it needs areas where the fur is much shorter. In this tutorial, I will show you how to add fur to the muzzle area of the cat. By the end of this tutorial, you have felted the bridge of the nose, the cheeks, the whisker pads, and around the eyes. And don't forget to click the subscribe button as well as the bell icon so you don't miss out on any tutorials. So to create those rich tabby tones, I'm using a brown top here and also a grey. This is for the bridge of the nose and the cheeks. For just above the nose, I'll use this foxy orange colour here. And then for any dark markings, I'll be using black and very, very dark brown. So let's start with the bridge of the nose. I'm starting off with a piece of my brown as a base for the nose. Just a small amount, keeping the fibres in the same direction. I'm going to double up and place it on top of the cat's nose. I'm using my 38 triangle needle, but I will alternate between this and my 40 triangle. I'm stabbing along the centre, not quite to the tip of the nose as I'm going to be adding some other colour later. I simply pull a few strands and tease it over the nose area, but not right up to it. Stab all over the area until it's secure in place. I've swapped to my 40 gauge triangle now. This will take a little bit of time to stab. You want it to be firmly stabbed down and not to easily pull off. Next to add a thin layer of the grey merino wool. The brown should still show through, so just a thin layer. And then I'm using my 40 gauge triangle again and I'm stabbing up and down in the direction of the fur, the way I want it to go and keep stabbing until it is securely down in place. Using these thinner, fine detail needles means there'll be less holes showing. Then I'm taking the tiniest wisp of the orange and laying it just above the nose. Carefully stab it into place with your needle. You can really see these colors now blending together. Add more if you need to. Shallow felt at different angles. I'm now adding some dark brown at the very corner of the nose, splaying out onto the cheek area. This provides great depth of colour right at that edge and defines the shape even more. Then repeat on the other side as well. On the real cat, you'll see there's flecks of a lighter colour coming through. So with the reverse needle, you're going to be pulling the core wool, which is a creamy colour, right through the browns and the greys that you've already added. Gently brush with your finger the fur in the way that it needs to go. I'll carry on pulling the fibres through and you'll see the effect at the end. This is brilliant for blending colours. Now add some more of the grey to deepen the corner of the nose. And then repeat on the other side as well. Then go over the whole of the bridge nose area with the normal a triangle needle to flatten down all the fibres unless you want them to be fluffy. Here I'm just going over the orange bit with my reverse needle to make it even paler and to really define that area and concentrate as a lighter patch. Keep referring to the real cat pictures to ensure that you get the colour that you need. I turn the head just to look at different angles and see it from a different perspective to check as well. 
I want to define the shape a bit more so I'm using my fingers to manipulate the wool along the edges. Here I'm adding a tiny amount of my orange around the shape of that nose and right down in the corner. And on the other side too. Next we'll add more fur to the cheeks. I'm going to do the same as I did with the bridge of the nose and add the brown first extending out to the cheeks. I'm keeping on stabbing to secure it all in place. When I'm happy with that shape, I'm going to do the same on the other side. Try to match the other side so that it's symmetrical. And again, add very thin amounts of the grey over the top with the brown still showing through. This makes a lovely tabby colour. Then go over the whole area with your reverse needle to bring those lighter shades through. Always pull in the direction of where you want the fur to go. If you'd like a, a more full tutorial on reverse felting, I'll put a link here as well. Again, you can leave it fluffy, but in my case, I just wanted to be blending the colours. So I'm now stabbing very carefully down along with my usual needle, my triangle needle, and then do the same on the other side. I hope you're liking this lovely blend of colours. I just think it looks really realistic when you blend colours like this. I'm now adding some darker brown to those very corners. I just feel that it needs a bit more depth of uh, darker colour here. You can see in the picture where you'll need to define darker areas sometimes. Now take some time to go over the whole area, making sure there's no stray fibres. Go at different angles and really make sure that there's some lovely symmetry going on there. And there we have the nose bridge and the cheeks for all nicely in place. Next, onto the eye markings. First, cut some lengths of ivory merino top. We're going to implant these using the long fur technique. Take a small section and pinch in the centre to create a bow shape. Place the centre where you need it. Stab in the centre with your needle. Fold over and then stab along that fold. Stab in at different angles to make sure it's securely in place and will not pull out easily. When you take your next piece, again fold at the centre, place it just along from the other so that they overlap. Keep adding your other pieces. Overlapping the previous one each time. The fibres should all go in the same way. And then when you've completed that row, give it a trim to make it much shorter. Following the curve around the eye. Then add a thin strand of the dark brown along the line to the left of the newly formed cream marking. I'm using my fingers here to manipulate the wool into the shape that I'd like it to be around the eye. I don't want there to be fibres going into the eye. Then I'll also use my needle to fluff up the fibres and keep them in the direction that I want them to go. For the cream marking underneath the eye, I need to start from the very outer corner and work my way in. Again, I'm folding the pieces of the merino tops 
but this time I'm making the fold go right up to the edge of the outline of the eye, making sure that I don't stab into the eye, but keep it very close to that edge. The fur is short, but I want to start off long just to make sure I have the fibers all going fanning out from the eye. It's a lovely, lovely textured look. And don't worry, it's not going to stay this long. I am going to trim it in a minute. <laughs> I'm now adding a fine thread of the black over that top edge. This really defines that dark eye line, but also will firmly secure all of the folds from the cream that I've just added as well. And here comes the trimming part. You can snip off the main length, but also go inwards with your scissors to make sure that you're getting that feathery look. And then carefully tease and brush out the fibres with your needle so they are going in the right direction. There should be no clumpy bits. You can flatten that whole area with your fingers very carefully and then stab with your fine needle into place as well. So I've finished the other side and I'm now using my fingers to really pinch the middle and to keep any stray fibres away from the eyes. It's important to keep everything really symmetrical. Moving on to the whisker pads and chin. But before we do, whose cat are you making? Please let me know in the comments below. I would love to know. We're going to add some of the lovely soft ivory merino tops to the whisker pad areas and the chin. So get ready some of your ivory wool, just some thin layers place over the whisker pad area and stab it into place with your 40 gauge needle. Ensure that you stab all along the edges right up to the cheek area along the nose line and then down towards the chin as well. Fix it securely in place. Felt the other side in the same way. comes to the chin I'm folding my piece in half and placing the fold along the mouth line. This is because I want the chin's fur to be slightly longer and all of the fibres going in that same direction away from the mouth line. And then you can trim any excess fibres. You can leave the fibres as they are now on the whisker pads on the chin or you can go over it with the reverse felting needle which I am doing now. I want to create short fur but keep it kind of fluffy like a soft kitten fluffy fur look. Even when I stab down slightly with my normal needle it's still going to have that velvety feel to it. Next for defining the mouth line. I'm adding some grey here to the very edge of the lips to mimic what's on the real cat here. I'm poking it with my needle along that very edge of the mouth line. Use a very fine needle here, just a 40 gauge triangle to fix it. Then I'm adding a very fine strand of the dark brown to define the mouth line even further. And lastly, I want to show you the whisker dots. This is my technique for adding those whisker dashes or dots where the whiskers protrude out of. Take a thin strip of your dark brown and fix it in place with your 38 or 40 gauge triangle. Make sure to go along the whole length of it. Add the other ones according to your photo that you're following. For this tabby Berman, the dots are going up into the cheek area as well.
Now here comes the fun part, to make them more splodgy and dashes of lines or dots rather than a straight line, I'm going to use the reverse needle to pull through some of the underneath wool. This breaks up the line and it looks much more realistic according to the real cat and far more natural. Then after using your reverse needle, go over it with your normal needle again. You can be really creative with this and hopefully get the effect that you're trying to achieve. And once you finish the other side, there we go. You've added some short fur on your cat head. In the next tutorial of this cat head series, I'll be teaching you how to add the luscious long fur to make it lovely and fluffy and realistic. You might want to watch this video next.